What's up everybody? Good morning, afternoon, guten tag, bonjour? I don't know. Hello and welcome to the latest episode of B is for Build. In this episode, we are upping the adventurability of the FJ Cruiser by adding in a secondary battery that is dedicated to power all the auxiliaries. It's going to be in line with our stock battery, so it's charged by our stock alternator, but it also has a disconnect switch so we can disconnect it from the stock battery and we can use it up, we can drain it down with our light bars or other auxiliary electronics, and then when we hit the road again, we can click it back in line with our stock battery and charge it up with the vehicle's alternator. That's the game plan. I'm gonna show you how to do it in this episode. Stay tuned. Before I get started, I wanna take a second out to thank our sponsor. This episode is proudly sponsored by the mobile game Vikings War of Clans. This is a game that I talked about a couple of months back and I've been playing it ever since then. This game is really addictive, really exciting. If you pick it up and play it for five to 10 minutes, you're gonna understand why it's so addicting and so fun. This game really resembles the top PC strategy games of back in the 90s and the 2000s, but now they're on your mobile phone, so it's a lot more easy to access, and you can just jump in and play on like a five or 10 minute break. There are massive battles going on between the two major coalitions, the East and the West, inside this game, and they're really, really fun to join in on. There's a massive battle coming out this month, so look out for that. You'll find me on the Western team. Overall, this game is a lot of fun and pretty addicting. It's a great strategy game with a hint of RPG to it as well. You guys support the channel by supporting the app. Head to the link in the description and download the app there. You will get an extra 200 gold bonus if you download through the link in the description, which is a huge starter for you guys. I wish I had that when I started, but I, I wasn't so lucky. So check the app in the description. Thanks so much for sponsoring this episode, Viking War of Clans. All right, getting down to work. We're gonna be working under the hood of this car for the entirety of the episode, and there were a lot of comments in the last one that people wanted me to clean up the engine bay. Now, that's not really my style, but I gotta concede on one thing. I'm definitely not painting the door trim. I don't have another week to do that, so I will go ahead and give a light cleanup to the engine bay just for the fans. And the other thing is I kinda wanna fix this up right here. So what happened was this car was a rollover, right? So that battery, battery acid is gonna have leaked out and it got on the hood, which then destroyed some of the paint. It's been peeling it back and probably caused rust and stuff like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean that up as well. Put another level uh, coat of paint on there so we don't have any more corrosion. We've got the engine bay cleaned up. I mean, as good as it's gonna get cleaned, I'm not gonna go too crazy on it. Got the corrosion off of those terminals there and off of the bottom of the hood. That was the main, main thing that I really wanted to clean up. So all this hood was uh, ground down um, to bare metal, sprayed with etching primer and then sprayed with paint. The etching primer will hopefully stop the rust. The paint will stop water from entering in. Okay, moving on, we are mounting a dual battery in this car. So the dual battery, uh, the, the best mounting place that I've seen is this big gaping hole right here. I mean, that, that side's pretty full up over there. There's a bunch of room right here. It looks like they probably engineered this spot so people could make this modification if they wanted to. Um, what I bought online is this battery tray. It's just kind of a universal battery tray. It's not for any specific car. And uh, yeah, so if you're doing this at home, I just searched for this on Amazon. It's about 25 bucks. It's a pretty good buy. Um, if I fit it in right here, I can get a pretty good spot where I can bolt it down. When you're putting a secondary battery in here, you have to bolt it into some really sturdy metal and stuff like that. As you're driving around, it's going to shake around and you don't want it to uh, rip off of its mounts or anything like that. That'd be terrible. So here we are, and this is roughly the spot where we're going to mount it. But first, I got to make some modifications to it. So I'm going to go ahead and do some cutting, some trimming, and get it to be the right size and shape that I want it to be. And then we'll mount it in here. Just finished making modifications to the battery tray. I realized in the beginning of the episode I kind of did pitch this as a quick little DIY, uh, but I don't know, look, look for yourself online. You might be able to find one of these battery trays for your specific application. 
Uh, but the dual battery kit prices sometimes are just as expensive as buying a welder, a hundred dollar welder and a twenty dollar cutoff blade to do your same, do the same things that I did. So I don't know, price that out accordingly. Um, so now that we have that modified, all we did basically was change the angle on both of those, uh, cut them, weld them, paint them up. We're gonna come back over to the car and mount this in. It's gonna go in like that. And um, where we're looking at mounting is one bolt's gonna go here on one of the arms, one's gonna go into the place that's already threaded there. And then we're gonna be drilling into the wheel well right here and we're gonna be using uh, nuts and bolts and very, very large washers to get a large footprint because these batteries do have a lot of weight to them and uh, you don't want the bolts ripping through that metal there. So we'll go ahead and get this mounted up and get the battery in there. Okay, the first step is done. We've got the battery tray bolted into the car real nice and sturdy, and then we've got our battery, our secondary battery in here, and that's mounted up nice and secure. I used the white one out of the BRZ at first, but it didn't have the right type of little flanges on the bottom to be able to mount into this uh, tray correctly. So this is our battery. Um, it's a used battery, and if it starts to fail me down the road, I'll just buy a brand new one and drop it in there. It'll be real easy. So it's on the charger right now to charge itself up. Next thing that we gotta do is start looking at our wiring that's over here for the LED lights and our remote switch. Okay, this is the remote controlled circuit that we're gonna use to turn on and off the LED light bars. And the reason we're mounting this next is because, like I said, we have to actually mount. This is a pretty large thing that we gotta mount under the hood. And then that's the last thing we need to mount before we start running wires to things. So the way that this works is we have the skinny wire here that runs uh, to and from the battery, the battery power and ground into our little remote box. That From that remote box it runs to the uh, smaller terminals here. And then the big terminals from here run, one of these go to power to the um, the, X, the secondary battery and the other will go to power on the lights. Here's our remote control key fob thing. This will go on my keychain. Sorry, it won't be in focus. Uh, it's got a nice little cover so it won't um, accidentally hit the buttons while I'm driving around. And then undo that and one of these will be to turn on the light and one of them will be to turn it back off. So let's go ahead and see where we're gonna mount this up under the hood and then we'll start running wires out of our little remote control circuit box. We gotta get that and that mounted up under the car. Okay, we've got this all temporarily wired up to give it a good test run. A uh, couple positive wires run out to there, a couple negative wires run out to there. That's the remote receiver. This is a solenoid which we mounted to the firewall. Um, the signal wires run into the bottom of this. The high power wires that are going to go to the light bar that carry all the actual current aren't wired up yet. This one will go to the posit positive terminal on the battery. This one will go to the positive wires for the light bars which are over there. So what you're going to see here is I have my remote and lock mode should be off. So if I click that, nothing's going to happen. Uh, unlock mode would turn the lights on and you hear the receiver clicks and the solenoid clicks. That's sending the power on and then turn it back off. Click that button and that goes off. So that is our on off switch for our light bar. Now we got to go ahead and get the light bars actually wired up to it. So that means taking the cables that we ran under the hood in the last episode, we're going to wire them around and we're going to come up to power and ground over here. Okay, we got a lot of wiring done. Let me give you a quick rundown of what we did. So uh, right here on this side, we grounded out the uh, light bars. Each light bar's ground runs to the chassis ground right there. Uh, and then the positive wires run across the engine bay, across there, over to this corner here where they come into our giant electromagnetic relay thing that is remote controlled. Um, but not before they go through their own inline fuse. Now, um, it would be handy to have the light bars on um, separate switches so you could turn on just the front or just the back, but for the time being, a good way to do that would be just be to come in here and if you wanted to turn off, say, just the front one or something, pull out the fuse for the front one and then that would be disabled. That's as good as I got for now. It'd be cool to have like inline switches in another time, but right now I don't have the materials to do that. So then the other side of this needs to run to the battery's uh, top post here and that's this side right here. 
always connected to battery. This is a disconnect that I'm going to show you in a second. Um, and then we have the ground and we have our little boxes back there. It's all wired in, kind of hidden back there. Ground runs back to chassis ground over here near our thing. So that's the battery ground. The battery positive right now, you would never really charge this battery, but it is hooked up to the light. So as I click this right here, that's off, that's on. That's back off again. So that's pretty cool. Um, the back one is uh, working as well. You can see it's all lit up back there. Um, very, very cool. So now the next part is, is how do you charge this battery and how do you make it not discharge your stock battery? And that's what we're gonna do next. It's as simple as, um, so that battery has ground, right? That's grounded to the chassis. This battery has ground. It's grounded to the chassis and the engine and other spots too. So that's the ground all sorted out on both batteries. Now, how do we charge this battery? Well, you can charge the battery simply by connecting it, chaining it with this battery. The alternator in the car, this car is set up with a pretty good, pretty hefty alternator. It can charge um, enough to make up for the other battery. <clears throat> So what we're going to do is we're going to run a high gauge battery cable from this top post here around to the back there, around and to the post on this battery right here. And this is a disconnect post. So what this does is it's on right now and it will go off if I screw it like this. It actually creates a little gap right there and then it's off. So when it's on, it will have a, a connected circuit going to that other battery. The car is running it will charge both batteries at the same time. When it's off, this battery is basically sitting solo. So if I had it like that, this battery would be sitting solo, um, powering the electronics. Anything I connect to this post, it will power, but it won't drain that battery. So what that means is I can go camping, I can run this battery all night until all my electronics die on it, and then leave it shut off, go start my car, because that's the one that's connected to the starter and the rest of the car. And then once the car is running, I can just go like this, simply turn it back on, and then it'll charge up this battery as I'm driving down the street. That's why I wanted this thing, that's the whole idea. I like to be able to, for instance, plug in a power inverter to this when I'm camping, use my laptop all night, have no worry of draining the car's battery and not being able to start the car in the morning. That's the whole reason that I wanted to do this. Dedicated battery for, you know, extra stuff like that. Really cool. Also, you get double the battery power in your car too. So all we have left to do is run that high gauge battery wire, keep everything tucked and tidy, and it will be a wrap. I'm really stoked that that didn't take very long. So here we have the positive post cable running uh, to the other battery. It goes around and it runs up and then uh, kind of this like side connection here to this post right here. And like I said before, right now it's connected. Both the batteries are connected. If I do this, it's disconnected. This battery has no communication with that battery. It won't share power or anything like that. And it's good to go and good to use all the electronics and click on and click off. Awesome. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that is a wrap for this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is step one in adventurability for me. I'm really stoked that we got this done. I like the battery that can disconnect from the rest of the system and go solo. I always wanted a dual battery system on one of my cars because when I'm on a road trip, having the ability to just use the power until it's gone and not worry about killing the car is awesome. And now I have this awesome remote control, which I can't get enough of. And I'm glad it's got this little cover case thing so I can uh, I won't hit the button accidentally in my pocket. And um, now when I'm driving, if somebody's tailgating me at night, I can get them good. So that's gonna be cool. Um, thanks so much for watching. If you wanna help out and support, head over to beastforbuild.com, scroll down to the shop, pick yourself up some merchandise. All the merchandise goes directly towards supporting the channel and the builds. So thank you guys so much that have done that. And uh, if you wanna find us in more places, head over to your favorite social media outlet. All of our links to social media outlets are in the description. That's about it. In the next episode, we're going to finish up our adventure ability with some sleeping quarters for the FJ. And it's a good one. It's a real good one. So stay tuned for that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. Peace!